I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for tuning in today. Today is another in our series of ongoing Chalk Talk videos where we deep dive on a various aspect or product of the uh, storage industry. So today we're going to be doing a product spotlight on from a company called Skyera. And joining me to walk us through that product is uh, the CEO of Skyera, Rado Daniluk. Thanks for joining us today, Rado. Thank you for inviting me. So what we're going to talk about today is uh, Skyera's new product, Skyhawk, which is a uh, all-flash uh, appliance designed to really uh, bring down the price. In fact, I know what you guys like to claim is that you've reached price parity with uh, storage systems. Uh, and so uh, let's talk about A, how you accomplish that, and, and B, how, we, uh, how, how the product works. So let's start with the flash module. Uh, in our product, uh, to achieve the density, we could not use conventional 2.5 inch form factor, uh, which is not dense enough. So we create dim like module, uh, which contains the controller, which we design, and the flash devices. For flash devices, we use, we use consumer grade MLC, which is multi-level cell, uh, from uh, Micron, Toshiba, and a few other vendors, 19 and 20 nanometer devices. That allows us to achieve very good cost. So these are essentially dim memory modules almost that you're using that obviously gives you some density uh, and allows you to really fine tune the controller for that function. Exactly. The, okay. For the flash, uh, the kind of dim form factor, dim like form factor is much more suited to get better density. Now, we have 24 of these modules uh, in our Skyhawk and they can be either one or two terabyte modules. Now, the flash uh, modules has to be connected to RAID, RAID SC controller chip, which uh, creates more reliable storage. So in the case that we lose some uh, flash uh, storage or we lose complete module, uh, we can still access the data. So that's the, what is for the RAID SC chip. So this really becomes a data protection capability exactly. uh, spread across those modules. Exactly, okay. because like in hard drive based system, uh, disk is not reliable enough to be deployed as an enterprise solution without deployment of the RAID. Sure. Similarly, solid state storage is also needs improvement of reliability from the RAID. Okay. And uh, we use our proprietary RAID which compared to conventional disk base rate that for uh, for rate 6 for every random write up to three writes are needed to be written to the disk our uh, basically uh, solution we use and our chip for every write uh, does slightly more than one write to the media much better so now we created uh, a reliable block level storage connected to network processor okay. now one thing what is very interesting uh, in enterprise application uh, they typically contain supercapacitors, which they prevent data loss, which is written to module in the case of the power fail. It's well known that supercapacitors are notoriously known for low reliability. What is also interesting, you do not find the supercap on our modules. Okay. Uh, so our rate is connecting to the network processor. Uh, the benefit of network processor over general purpose processor is that it is optimized for high performance networking and as basically our product produce uh, 41 gigabit links and 310 gigabit uplinks. So essentially you have a network switch, for lack of a better word, built right into the device, the Skyhawk itself. Yeah. Okay. And also uh, for protecting in the case of the power failure for the data loss, we have magnetic uh, RAM, MRAM in our product, okay. which was announced earlier. It's a component from Everspin. Now, one of the problem is what we mentioned, how to get all that bandwidth privately to every server. So we integrate layer three, layer two and uh, with some layer three functionality switch silicon on, uh, in our chip. We are using off the shelf components where we take three chips, we put them in the stacking mode and we connect with private uh, 10 gigabit links going to one gigabit links and providing also uplink. So one of the benefit is that that's fully contain layer two switch with some layer three capability where attached servers can communicate to the regular Ethernet network uh, even outside of the box. So for example, when we connect server with, uh, with two one gigabit link for higher performance, mm -hmm. 
One of the problem would be that that server will be unable to connect to Ethernet network because both the links which typically you have for free on your motherboard are consumed. Right. The fact that we have layer to switch, he can use all the private bandwidth of the, uh, for the storage, but you don't need additional Ethernet link because he can communicate to the aggregation switch through our box. Oh, That's okay. a huge benefit where allows you to double the performance of the storage uh, without uh, having any additional expense. Okay. Our well, and it's not the, it. the, and also just the space, right? Because some servers just don't have room they for... They don't have room for additional NIC cards. Exactly. Right. So, so what I am impressed when, when you guys uh, walk me through this, I mean, clearly the, the vertical integration is, is critical, but I, I think everybody kind of gets excited. As you know, Rado, I've always been kind of really intrigued by the switch part, just because in, in my prior experience, I did a lot of system design and flash, you know, we always worry about how flash messes up the back end. Boy, it causes havoc on the network, too, because you sort of count on that hard drive latency to uh, exactly. forgive some uh, uh, bad design. And, and when you bring flash in, it makes that you either got to really drive the network cost up or you got to do something different. Exactly. And yeah. what I really like about this for the first time that I know of, that somebody's doing something different out here that allows me to leverage one gig links. Because I think the, the, the knee jerk uh, uh, decision is, oh, let's go 10 gig. Well, 10 gig is kind of overkill for a lot of servers. And it's you expensive. Know. Exactly. You know, cheap server at four or $500. Uh, you know, if you add $300 networking card, that's kind of causing the problem. The, another problem is that today one gigabit is not sufficient performance, but 10 gigabit CPUs are not there. So ideal is two to three gigabit. Right. So that perfectly matches without increasing the cost, uh, the performance need with, uh, you know, how much performance we can obtain from the flash. Right. And like I said, what I like about it is you're, you're not only driving down the cost in the back end because of your vertical integration and all the software that you add in here, uh, but you're also driving, if you will, the front end uh, connectivity. Exactly. Right? It has to be cost of the solution, which is uh, much better than uh, you can typically uh, buy for that kind of performance. Okay, and then let's also talk about, uh, just real quickly, about features, right? Because obviously we've talked about connectivity, high-speed device. Um, do I get the uh, kind of enter enterprise class features that I'm used to seeing in, in storage systems as well? So we provide complete software management stack providing from the snapshot manageability feature. We have compression and deduplication, which is done in hardware in various components of the, of the PCs. You have uh, enterprise uh, reliability and protection in the form of the RAID. So you have completely vertically integrated system. Okay. And, and so it's, it's really given me all the feature set that I would expect from, that I'm kind of used to in my enterprise exactly. stuff, right? But you're giving it to me in an in a all-flash design uh, and at a cost that is uh, competitive with a hard drive-based exactly. system. Right? Exactly. Great. Well, Rado, thank you for joining us today and walking us through the Skyhawk. Thank you very much for inviting me. I'm George Crump, Lead Analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for tuning in today and uh, stay tuned for additional videos.